Hello everyone, Arthapie King here, and this is Let's Play Demon's Crest. Now last time we left off, uh, we had just beaten the awful, terrible, ridiculous skeleton boss man thing, and then we went and uh, did a little skull bashing minigame. Now what we're going to do now is we are going to head back into the village, because um, I have a few things that I need to show off here. First off, I did not show how um, Firebrand goes into doors, and the doors actually do lead places. Um, he headbutts them, like so. I'm going to turn the volume up just a hair. There we go. And you press up to go into them. Now, this is another magic shop. Um, or no, I think this is the library. Magical powers. Okay, my apologies. Yeah, he tells you about the talismans, which um, give you little passive effects. That was something I didn't know. Uh, something else I wanted to show off is you can break pots. Like that. It doesn't really serve much of a purpose anywhere in the game, but it always makes me laugh. Uh, up here are some stone blocks that we can't break, and we cannot jump high enough to get up there, so that place is inaccessible right now. Whatever could it be in there? But we're going to continue on with the stage, um, as normal. And this place is just as easy as it was the first time. Just kind of do the firebrand thing. Ignore the ghosts, keep going. Down here. Uh, once we get to this spot, we are actually going to change over to the ground gargoyle form and just pop that out of the way. And there is an entire new subsection of stage in here. I kind of like the music in this section. Uh, I think it's very pretty. I think a good use of the SNES's instruments. Uh, the ground gargoyle's shot does normal damage when it's in the air like that, but when it travels across the ground it actually does double damage, which is extremely useful. And I'm getting owned. being said, I really do prefer Firebrand's default form. I just find it to be generally more useful. Uh oh There we go. Get a little rapid fire going. Uh, it's really nice to uh, treat his flame as sort of a melee weapon, since you can... As long as there are no bullets on the screen, you can fire number one, so... The sooner it hits something, the sooner you can fire again. Um, one sec. <laughs> Pardon me for that. Alright, now as you can see, the light's kind of flickering up and down. That is because this place has a uh, actual lighting mechanic. You have to use your, your actual fire. Now, nothing else will do. You can light these areas. But have to switch between forms to actually get through these uh, stone pillars, like we had seen earlier. Uh, luckily, switching is really fast in this game. It doesn't feel like much of a chore, at least not to me anyway. Because you can typically switch, you know, within the span of a, a second or two. Uh, this place is a bit of a labyrinth, but luckily I actually know where I'm going, and now you're going to see me fumble around for the door. And we are on to our next boss, Mr. Igoober Blobberman. I don't think that's his canonical name, but I think it's a pretty good one. And it gives you a little health restore that you can access if you're fast enough, which I'm beginning to think I am not. There we go, just barely got it. Now, if you fall in there, um, you'll get stuck in the goo, fall through the bottom of the stage, and die. Uh, don't ask me how I know that, just, just take my word for it. I really like this boss a lot. I think it's a ton of fun to do. I did it three or four times in preparation for this video, and I just loved it every time. So first you have to take out all the little eyeballs, and they take three hits a pop to take out, so it's it's kind of long. The thing that I like about it is you see all of the eyeballs in the main body? Those are the ones that you're going to be killing. It doesn't just spawn them randomly. It's not a random number. You can track your progress for this fight, and I think that's a pretty good use of the... Um, Pretty good use of the, uh, the sprites in this. 
Uh, they will occasionally drop um, health power-ups. It's definitely random, but it's it's handy when it happens. Uh, sometimes the eyes will retreat back into the main body, but luckily the damage stays. So you don't have to worry about doing more work than you might have had to. In a less well-designed game. There we go. Now, knock on wood, I'm not going to fail this. And good lord, this is actually the worst I've done, but I think it's because I'm trying to do commentary and distracting myself. Uh-oh. Yep, the, uh, the main body you can stand on, but it's sticky. Um, your movement slows down dramatically. Let's see, I might be able to do this in one shot. We'll see. Haven't failed this yet. Hopefully this won't be the first time. That was actually really risky. I'm glad that he decided to stop pursuit there. There we go. And now for the main body. It was a lot of health drops this time, which was really lucky because I took a bunch of unnecessary damage. Uh-oh. I have made a grave error. And the main eyeball, obviously, is going to take a fair bit more amount of punishment than the other ones, and he also has a uh, shot that he fires off periodically. Uh, doesn't telegraphic like the other boss. He will stop for a split second, but it's not really much time to get ready. But he's not hard at all. He's very easy. This is a lot easier than the last one, which I, I really wish I had waited, honestly. I wish I had waited to go to that one, but, you know... Hindsight is 2020, but we get the first Firecrest upgrade, the second piece of the Firecrest, which is called Buster. And I can break through stone with it, which is exciting. Now you'd think the first thing that we're gonna do, oh, my mouse is back on the screen, oops, is gonna is go back to the, uh, oh dear, I have made a grave error, there we go. So you'd think the first thing that we're gonna do is go back to the village, um, but no, we are actually going to backtrack again, even further back. And this is what makes me think of the um, Super Metroid. Make, think of the game Super Metroid is all of the backtracking in this. You know, get power-ups and then traverse older levels again. But it's it's really not too bad, because the stages are all pretty short. It's not hard to get through them at all. You just, you know, you'll be seeing familiar sights from time to time. Uh, luckily, you do not have to refight bosses, and you'll notice that the music didn't change immediately, uh, fade to black, and onto the next section. It can make certain sections up appear more disjointed than normal, though. Like, when there's not a smooth transition, especially at the end of certain stages, it just... Firebrand doesn't really react well, he just looks really confused. These axe throwers, the first couple times I played through this game, gave me so much trouble because I, you know, my instinct is to stop and kill everything, you know, that's what you do in games. But Firebrand is honestly, he's really not much of a fighter. Um, he is best, the best strategy with him usually is to utilize your impressive mobility, like when I totally didn't grab onto that platform. Best mobility ever. But I, I really love the way Firebrand controls, I really do. It's so smooth. But let's go ahead and bust out our new power-up. It is the Buster Shot, which can destroy blocks, but more importantly, you can shoot twice with it. And that is just the best thing ever. Look at that, two bullets on screen. But in that wall, we get another life upgrade, which is fantastic because things are going to start hurting. And I'm going to keep hitting my head on that ceiling, so I'm just going to take the platform the slow way now. This is the end of this stage. And we're going to walk up to where we would normally be fighting General Arma. And Firebrand is going to stand there and fade to black. Alright. Now this time, we're going to turn around and we are going back to the village. Like I said, very reminiscent of Super Metroid, lots of backtracking. Um, let's go ahead and um, look at the story just a little bit. Let's 
Let's see, this guy doesn't recognize Firebrand. Let's go ahead and tell him that we're a stranger, see what he has to say. No, you don't say. Uh, that, that doesn't sound right. In fact, if the two previous games were any indication, he stopped the Demon Realm from burning. Arrogant fool Firebrand, take care of yourself. Oh, well, thank you for that... That history lesson, chum. That's totally not propaganda, but whatever. One thing that's a little irritating about the uh, fire crusts is it defaults back to uh, Fireman's crappy regular shot every time you um every time you go into a new area. And that it, that is a very small nitpick, but I don't like having to switch so much. But man, I love having two shots on the screen at once. I just you don't appreciate how nice it is to have multiple shots in a game until you really play without it for a little while. Bonk. There we go. Oops, I forgot to show something off. Oh well, I can show it off at the end of the video, no big deal. Hitbox is also just a hair bigger on them, so uh, Firebrand's regular shots will fly over those, um, but the Buster shots won't. I deserved that. I knew he was going to drop down. Now, they do the same amount of damage, but, you know, again, being able to shoot twice is just the godly godliest of sins. And look at that sweet pickup. I mean, I still got hit for it a couple times, so net loss, but it looked cool, right? Oh, one thing I want to show real quick in the pause menu. Uh, these are actually called vellums. That's what the scrolls themselves are called. Um, when you go into the spell shop, you can only have a number of scrolls per uh, vellums you have. Or, excuse me, number of spells per vellums. And that's just a shortcut to the next area. I'm actually not going that way. I want to take the scenic route for a specific reason. Oh, back to the uh, scrolls and vellums. Uh, they don't get used up, per se. A lot of things that I want to talk about in a short amount of time. Oops. Uh, they don't get used up, so if you inscribe a, a spell onto your vellum and then and then use it, it goes back to being a vellum. So it's basically that's the number of spells you can have, and they, you know, of course you can refill them, kind of like um, jars in in Zelda with the, the potions and such. But I digress. Um, the regular fire shots will not, um, damage those ghosts, and I, I thought it was kind of weird at first, but I realized the reason that they won't is because those ghosts eat fire, so you have to damage them with something else, like the buster shot. And that really bothered me at first, but I think that's such a nice, like, small touch. There we go, and Firebrand awkwardly shambles forward to the pit, and stage end. And that's what I meant when things feel a little disjointed. Alright, that's really the end of everything I had to show you. I just want to hop back in here real quick, like. Switch over to the buster shot. And might make my way up here. And you can destroy these now. Now you can't hit the bottom ones unless you do, like, floating shenanigans, which is kind of annoying. But we're gonna go in here. And it is the potion shop. But I need an urn to carry a potion. So, that's the end of that interaction. Yeah, not super exciting, I know. But, once you get urns and you can start buying the potions, they're really useful. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and end the video. Uh, this has been Ark the Piking, and I hope you have a great night.